Mr. Sloth's Bite-Sized Summary of the Bovlo Effect by Eric Balchunas. When most people are asked to consider the most influential investor that's ever lived, it's usually the case that Warren Buffett's name will feature prominently in the discussion. However, the author of the Bovlo Effect puts forward a very convincing case for the monumental influence of Jack Bovlo on the world of investing. So, who is Jack Bovlo? More importantly, why is he such an important figure in the history of investing? Okay, let's take a look at the first summary point to find out why. Summary point one, addition by subtraction. Jack Bogle's overall investment philosophy, underpinned by the index fund, was all about addition by subtraction. The author of this book makes a comparison to punk rock. For example, punk was built by stripping away all the aspects of rock that punk rock pioneers didn't value from rock music at the time. In a similar way, Jack Bogle created an entire form of investing that eliminated all the stuff that just gets in the way of investors' fair share of returns. This includes management fees, investment brokers, trading costs, attempts at market timing. Eric Balchunas, the author of The Bogle Effect, writes, A cheap index fund is basically investing distilled to its purest form. On a personal note, the Sloth Investor is a big fan of this concept of addition by subtraction as it connects very strongly to my first bedrock principle of simplicity. Remember, within the realm of investing, simplicity outperforms complexity. Indeed, the next summary point also links strongly to this notion of simplicity of adopting a less is more approach to investing. Summary point two, the hedgehog and the fox. No doubt you've heard the story of the tortoise and the hare, but how familiar are you with the story of the hedgehog and the fox? According to Eric Balchunas, Jack Bogle loved to use parables to make his case for the index fund. One such parable that he loved to use was the hedgehog and the fox. In this short story, the fox knows many things and is a very smart and cunning creature who is constantly able to create an increasing range of strategies to deliver a sneaky attack on the hedgehog. However, every time the fox thinks he has outsmarted the hedgehog, it simply rolls into a ball of spikes and the fox is forced to retreat. So, what does this have to do with investing, I hear you ask? Well, as stated in the book, the moral of the story is that the fox knows many things and is undoubtedly clever, but the hedgehog knows one great thing. Are you beginning to see the connection that Jack Bobo made to the domain of investing? The one great thing for Jack Bobo was buying and holding an index fund containing a broadly diversified collection of stocks across a range of different industries. From Bobble's perspective on investing, you really don't need to know anything else. This is what the author states in the book. Bobble saw Vanguard investors as hedgehogs in a world full of foxes. As a child growing up in England, the sloth investor would occasionally observe foxes in his garden at night time. In summary point three, you'll learn about another reference to gardening. Summary point three, the Big Long. Have you heard of The Big Short? It's a 2015 movie based on a 2010 book written by Michael Lewis that explored how the financial crisis of 2007 to 2008 was triggered by the United States housing bubble. The Big Short made it fashionable to call out bubbles, tops, or other potential problems in the stock market. It can often be easy for those within the investment industry to get their name into the financial media by stating their belief in an upcoming market crash or market blow. So, if this gives us some background information on the big short, what does Eric Balchunas mean by the big long? Well, once again, it's connected to the concept of simplicity. Quite simply, when the author of this book refers to the big long, he's referring to the mindset of staying the course or staying long the market. So, rather than trying to gamble by predicting the inevitable ups and downs of the market, investors should commit to the big long by remaining committed to their investment portfolios through the good times and the bad. Remember how I said that there would be a reference to gardening? Well, in this section of the book on the big long, the author of this book wisely notes that it's important for investors to think more like gardeners and gamblers. Why? Well, gardeners recognize the importance of patience, of taking their time to cultivate and grow their garden to its full potential. Similarly, just like the cultivation of a beautiful garden, impressive returns in the stock market don't simply occur over one night, one week, one month or even one year. Great investors think like gardeners. The very best investors recognize the importance of adopting a long time horizon for their investment portfolios. Summary point four, relative predictability. 
What is something that causes so many investors unnecessary high levels of anxiety? Well, one key thing is decisions. As an investor, you may ask, did I make the right decision about the right stock to buy? Did I make the right decision about the right industry to invest in? Questions such as these keep many investors awake at night. However, for slow investors, questions such as these are unnecessary. That's because rather than second guess which specific stock or which particular sector is going to do well, Sloth investors give themselves access to the entire stock market by investing in a broadly diversified portfolio. Such a decision means that Sloth investors give themselves exposure to an extremely broad range of stocks across a wide range of sectors. In addition to saving time and simplifying the investing process, such a decision also leads to something that Jack Bowell referred to as relative predictability. In The Boggle Effect, Author Eric Balkunas writes about an occasion when he asked Jack Bovo why Vanguard investors seemed so good at not flinching and staying the course during tough market declines. In response, Bovo stated that Vanguard's funds were inherently predictable by nature. Let's make a comparison between an index fund and an actively managed fund for a moment. An actively managed fund, which is a fund that contains a select group of stocks that have specifically been selected by a small group of professional fund managers, may very well underperform. Simply put, for the individual investor, there's no way of knowing whether an actively managed fund will outperform or not. Indeed, on average, most can't, although a small number do. However, if you do decide to invest your hard-earned income in an actively managed fund, how can you be sure that you have chosen one of the select few that will outperform? Crossing your fingers that you have selected one of the few actively managed funds that will outperform isn't exactly a recipe for a good night's sleep. On the other hand, investing in a low-fee, broadly diversified index fund provides investors with relative predictability because through all of the ups and downs of the stock market over the past 200 years, history has shown that the overall stock market always recovered from even the lowest points and moments of true despair. This is why investing in a low-fee, broadly diversified index fund is sometimes known as a sleep well at night strategy. Sleep well at night. A good night's sleep comes from the fact that you don't have to worry about whether you are invested in the right stock or the right sector. As the owner of a broadly diversified index fund, you own the stock market as a whole. Summary point five, the insights of other leading figures from the world of finance. The Boggle Effect contains interviews with many leading figures from the world of finance. One of the key insights from the book comes from Michael Lewis, author of finance books such as The Big Short and Moneyball. Now, you might think that such a significant figure within the world of finance would perhaps follow a complex, highly nuanced approach to investing. However, this is not the case. In fact, Michael Lewis is also a firm advocate of keeping things simple by investing in index funds. Here's an interesting quote from Michael Lewis in the book. I always thought the index fund had this other knock-on effect in the value it had for people's lives because they could just stop thinking about this stuff. That's what it has done for me. Instead of checking my portfolio five times a day and thinking about what I should do, I don't think about it at all. And it's enabled me to be a much better writer because I'm not worrying about that. So there you have it, the most respected financial journalist being frank and honest about the way that he invests. Michael Lewis keeps things simple by investing in an index fund. Summary point six, Jack Bogle's legacy. The author brings the book to a close by writing wisely about the profound influence of Jack Bogle on the world of investing. He states, while there are a handful of legendary investors whose legacies will carry on, Bogle is likely to rise to the top of the list over time, given that his success wasn't in playing the game well, but rather in changing the game for the better. The author is right to heap such a claim on the late great Jack Bogle. He's right to point out in the book that Bogle's relentless focus on costs have taken more than $1 trillion out of the claws of Wall Street and stuffed it into the pockets of everyday investors. Remember how I mentioned Warren Buffett at the start of this video. In his 2016 shareholder letter, Buffett states, If a statue is ever erected to honor the person who has done the most for American investors, the hands-down choice should be Jack Bogle. For decades, Jack has urged investors to invest in ultra-low-cost index funds. In his crusade, he amassed only a tiny percentage of the wealth that has typically flowed to managers who have promised their investors large rewards while delivering them nothing, or, as in our bet, less than nothing of added value. In his early years, Jack was frequently mocked by the investment management industry. 
Today, however, he has the satisfaction of knowing that he helped millions of investors realize far better returns on their savings than they otherwise would have earned. He is a hero to them and to me. High praise indeed there from Warren Buffett. For additional insights about the Boggle Effect and to listen directly from the author of the book, you can watch my interview with Eric Balchunas by viewing episode 27 of the Slow the Master podcast. You can find a link to that interview in the description to this video. Also, to learn why the Sloth Investor is such an admirer of Jack Bobo, I welcome you to listen to episode 10 of the Sloth Investor podcast. Again, you can find a link to that episode in the description to this video. To keep up to date with the latest content from the Sloth Investor, whether this be my podcast or other video content, please remember to subscribe to this channel.